Patrick Verney, welcome to the show. Patrick, can you uh, introduce yourself, please, with a few short sentences about what you do and who you are? Well, so I'm uh, Patrick Verney. I work uh, first for, for, for Bayer uh, in the environmental science uh, uh, group, uh, and I focus on uh, uh, stakeholder uh, affairs uh, coordination within uh, a larger region of uh, uh, Europe and uh, in, uh, Africa and, um, and Asia. But of course, you know, it's more a coordination role uh, for the far distance uh, countries. But in some, um, in some, some parts of the world, like Europe, uh, also for historical reasons, are more deeply involved in uh, uh, with what we call in our business stakeholders um, and I uh, have a long history with SIPA mm -hmm. uh, where I've been involved in uh, the evolution of SIPA for many years, you know, I think it's almost 15 years now uh, and I've seen the, the um, great progress SIPA is, has made and is continuing to, to make uh, and uh, I've been uh, I am currently a member of the board of directors and I'm very excited about the, the changes and um, uh, all the positive dynamic of, of our industry. Yeah, thank you. And I, I appreciate the work that you all in the board of directors do. And I really look forward uh, to having all of the board of directors in the, in, uh, in the interviews. Um, mm -hmm. So thank you for your time and your investment. Uh, into SEPA and, and European pest managers. How, uh, what is, can you explain a little bit of what your employer, yes. Bayer Environmental Science, uh, what do you do and, and what is the, the vision of Bayer for pest management? Well, uh, maybe just, uh, if I just step back, I mean, Bayer is a, is a, is a big company. Um, and uh, we see the big uh, purpose of Bayer is a science for a better life. So our, our business is based on first on science, mm -hmm. to provide a solution to society at large for a better life. And of course, it's based on, on uh, two divisions, you know, two types of business, pharmaceuticals mm -hmm. um, and, and uh, agro-industry uh, agro mm -hmm. and also uh, all what we call uh, in our business environmental science, or including public hygiene. Yeah. So... Um, we, the, the vision again is, is, is uh, health for mm -hmm. all. So, um, of course, based more on our pharmaceutical uh, business. Mm -hmm. And we say hunger for none. And that's, mm -hmm. of course, more from the agriculture. Mm -hmm. And when we are in this world of uh, uh, public hygiene, which is almost in between, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we crystallize, you know, and we're almost at the heart, even if we are a much smaller business it's also a, an essential uh, part of um, of the business and of, of society uh, at large mm -hmm. and um, so um, we want to uh, contribute to provide uh, solutions uh, for society at large and for the actors uh, who uh, put in place uh, those uh, solutions to ensure uh, public uh, hygiene in in the sectors where there is a need um, and uh, for sure we see that um, there is um, there's been a great need in the recent weeks uh, for, oh, yeah. for, 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 for that uh, and one thing which is key I would say is yeah. over years you know we want to continue to innovate yes so, uh, you know, innovation is really at the core of our DNA. You know, uh, things don't stand still. So there were solutions we were providing 30, 10 years ago. Some are still there, but a lot of them, you know, are replaced with uh, new ones, which are uh, more modern, more, uh, it's, it's, it's uh, continuous progress, you know, and that's the society we live in and we are, excited to be able to contribute uh, to this uh, movement so um i um you are in the industry for 25 plus years probably and with bayer you were able to form a lot of what we know of current pest control 
Um, and I know the past month with uh, COVID and the crisis and the virus yeah. changed everything. Uh, probably a situation that you, in your 25 plus years of career, never experienced. So, so what happened? Um, what, what changes brought that uh, to you and to the company? And how did you guys react? Um, well, yes, like you say, you know, nobody, uh, certainly in uh, my uh, working uh, uh, experience, I never uh, experienced such a situation and I don't think any of my colleagues uh, have. So you have to, like all of us, you know, we have to, to adapt yes. and to um, analyze the situation and do the best we can in the current circumstances mm -hmm. and focus on, on priorities. I think the first thing which has happened, to be honest, Yeah. is uh, we wanted to make sure that all um, employees uh, were safe. Yeah. So safety for uh, uh, people were, uh, have been a top priority. So as an example, uh, I have been working from home since uh, middle of March. Like uh, said, Unbelievable. Yeah. Like most of my colleagues. Yeah. Um, in some jobs, you know, in... Uh, in production, for example, of course, uh, they they had they, they have had to to continue um, uh, going to uh, you know the the, the workplace mm -hmm. uh, because one of the second priority to it was to ensure that our customers will continue to have the the product the solution they needed to do the job. Yeah. So uh, production side have continued to be open, of course, with special measures. Uh, for distancing, hygiene, and so on. Um, so that was the, you know, the the second priority after the safety of the employees, the the, the continuation of uh, uh, our production and supply to make sure our customers could do their job and therefore provide this service of of public hygiene, which which was so critical uh, at, at that time. That was. Um, That was uh, one, uh, and, and and it was challenging because borders were uh, sometimes uh, shut. Uh, uh, and uh, in uh, nowadays, we learn the lesson that the the supply chain uh, uh, includes many different steps with many different uh, intermediates uh, components, uh, and you need to put the whole lot together in the right place with the right people to make sure the product is, is delivered, and that's. Uh, has been a huge challenge mm. and uh, from what I heard in, there have been some minor delays uh, of all that we've been able to uh, to deliver and that's uh, you know we, we, are, we are quite proud of that and I think most of the customers are satisfied with that uh, yeah. that we could keep up keep up uh, deliveries yeah. <laughs> so yeah uh, in, the, in the crisis we all learn something that if you would have asked us wouldn't have been our top priority at the top of our heads which was pest control is a key industry or relevant to the system um, that changed a bit of the perception of pest control i think and i loved your introduction where you said everything you do stands and falls for human health And I think in the mm. end, pest control is a very vital part for human health. So I 100% agree with you. Mm. And um, I know that you, within the board of directors of SEPA, you guys um, have worked uh, with SEPA members on the so-called Memorandum of Understanding, also on mm. professionalization mm. of pest control. Um, how does this document, this MOU that you're circulating um, at such a high pace to so many people and stakeholders in the world, uh, mainly in Europe, how does that um, affect pest control and the professionalization of our industry in the moment? Well, I, I think uh, if, if, uh, it's, it's even more uh, relevant, uh, this uh, memorandum of understanding today than yeah. it was uh, six months or a year ago, I think. It was, um, you know, we are all being convinced that it was the, the, the right way away, uh, ahead, sorry. Uh, but it's even more um, the case now. Uh, and and uh, we, we are seeing at the moment that we get uh, more, um, um, you know, stakeholders listening and receptive to, to our move. I think it is true that, you know, <clears throat> the last two months with the really 
where, where Europe is, uh, has been in the middle of the crisis, you know, the, the focus was more on the immediate uh, situation and uh, therefore having our uh, best control industry, uh, uh, being able to, to work, which was not yeah. always the case in old countries, being recognized as a, as a key, uh, key industry, a key contributor yeah. uh, to, to public hygiene. So there was this urgency for a, a few weeks. Now I think um, we uh, we are moving out of the the main crisis. The, the the situation is not resolved, but we are coming out of the peak of the of the crisis, um, uh, and and therefore uh, countries and uh, key stakeholders at European level with uh, you know a green deal uh, being in place or being developed. Uh, uh, Politicians and administrations say, "How can we, uh, you know, really implement you know, and be prepared better for the future? And who can contribute?" So, really, uh, I think we we couldn't have a, a better timing for uh, right. for our memorandum of understanding. And, and um, you know, the the um, there would be a more official launch at the end of the year where we will. You know, gather all really the the actors. We we are positive and pushing for it. So the momentum is is um, is uh, is getting greater, which is uh, very positive. Yeah. Um, and uh, memorandum. Of sorry. Understanding? Sorry. What is sorry. the key message in the memorandum of understanding? So why do pest managers uh, need to be uh, more professionalized? So what is the approach? Is it is it the big focus is IPM, or how would you describe it in a few words? Well, first, you know, it's a minimum of standing. It's realizing different actors need to contribute for an, an overall goal. So it can't be just, for example, uh, pest control operators on their own. Yep. You know, you need a, you need an understanding of the. Uh, um, of the of the customers, we have uh, recognized as a, a need for for public hygiene because without them, uh, yeah. <laughs> there's no uh, there's no action, there's no business. Of course, there is a need for those who are going to put in place. There is a need for uh, uh, all the actors who provide solution to the the, the contractors. There is a need for the regulators to understand uh, uh, this need. There is a need for the politicians. Yeah. And, and and it's all this you know mapping of stakeholders who need to join up forces and to recognize that it is important and to 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 do this job because this job is important it needs to be done well uh, with a high level of professionalism which needs training and training in a way where uh, what we call IPM so integrated pest management is uh, fully um, uh, implemented and uh, IPM is, is the base is uh, uh, training and professionalism to use the best method knowledge is important and skill is important uh, we are talking about biology of pests um, so the most important tool is the brain you know at the end exactly. you know, knowledge to, yeah. to understand knowledge to, you know, yeah, uh, and, 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 um, and also that's so uh, uh, there is a high need to have, uh, because of the very diverse uh, situation of pests and uh, geography and situations, uh, a large toolbox for yeah. uh, uh, for the pest controllers. Uh, uh, we know that the monitoring is is, is essential. Uh, mm -hmm. We know th we know that physical methods are important. Mm -hmm. We know that. Traps are important. Biocides are also uh, very important, but it needs to be tailored to the situation with skills, uh, uh, um, uh, skills train uh, pest controllers. Super, understand. Yeah. And I think what was very valuable in what you said is that not only it's the pest control operators, but it's it's regulators, it's the food industry, farm industry, logistic industry, so many stakeholders from. Yeah. From top to bottom, really, and I think that is the true value of the memorandum of understanding mm. brought forward by people to the European Commission. Mm. And uh, yeah, you know, just hats off for the for the great work that SIPA and you guys performed in the past decade, uh, which is the basis for this, obviously. So, mm. um, can you? What would be your take on another end? Then, um, if we 
would have um, transferred to the year 2025, 2030 maybe. Um, how do you think could this memorandum of understanding, the COVID crisis, which changed our industry and the importance of it, how will pest control change in the next 10 to 20 years? Is there anything that changed our industry already because of COVID? Or do you think the things that are about to change or nothing changes at all um, within the next 10 or 20 years are going to be? Well, I think there will be many more changes. Um, uh, clearly, we, we see that uh, the way of working uh, has been uh, impacted. And what I mean, I think, the, the pace of change probably has increased and has been stimulated by COVID. Yeah. You know, uh, there were things which have been already initiated, which will be further uh, uh, implemented at a faster pace. Uh, uh, we know that um, uh, uh, intelligent, um, um, artificial intelligence is going or digitalization is coming. I think it, it was a boost for uh, testing uh, those tools. Um, um, and, you know, I think all PCO will, will also um, uh, question how to work uh, remotely more, maybe, you know, because we know transport has a big impact on uh, uh, CO2 emission and is a big cost for PCOs. So can I, can I uh, visit the sites less? Question mark, you know, but that's that's one of the big topics. Um, can uh, um, uh, uh, yeah, or, or use a remote uh, systems for detection? Uh, you know, and how? Uh, that's uh, that's a big question. Reporting and documentation is very important as well. So uh, uh, those methods will, will evolve uh, with time, uh, and all that means again that um, uh, we talk about artificial intelligence so there's intelligence so uh, still uh, you, uh, people will be key so professionalism is very important and training as well and when we you sit back when you look at europe uh, with uh, different countries different level of professionalism different uh, there are many many uh, uh, majority of very good uh, PCOs uh, oh, yeah. uh, in Europe, no question about it. Absolutely. But we also have to recognize the, the level of uh, this uh, professionalism is not even. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, and we need um, across Europe to raise the bar, to raise the bar. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. So, you know, if we look at 2025, I think you said, I think we, we have to, uh, to achieve that the, the bar has been raised, you know, all over Europe. It's good to have gold so we know what we are aiming for. Um, yeah. Patrick, what I would find really interesting, many, many people look at Bayer and think, um, you know, I had an, uh, an earlier interview with one of your colleagues from the UK uh, a yeah. month ago. And I know that many people in the industry look at Bayer and think, oh, this big company and very, you know, um, unflexible and non-innovative. But if you, for instance, Google digital pest management, you see that Bayer in the US in, in, uh, in America developed their own digital monitoring system. So I think a lot of people think of, of Bayer as uh, the old biocide producer, but I think you are so, so much more than that. Um, can you explain to people how uh, your US American colleagues um, uh, what, what brought them towards making a digital traffic solution? I found that really, really interesting and innovative. No, but I think, um, for, first of all, I would challenge you. I mean, I accept maybe the perception, but uh, I will, uh, as, a, as an employee, uh, I, I do not uh, share your view or your perception, uh, if I put it like that, Daniel. No, no uh, I, think one of, I think uh, oh, you're okay. highly innovative, so don't worry. I apologize. Uh, <laughs> As being an employee, and I mentioned it in, in the beginning, one of the strengths of uh, Bayer is, is innovation. And I think we have proven that in all sectors of, of the businesses we are here. Mm -hmm. um, however, uh, it's, it is um, uh, true that we take the steps, you know, step by step, we innovate step by step. Exactly. Um, uh, to validate, to ensure uh, conformity with uh, the, the higher standards, 
um, and we take the time to, to develop the, the right solution for the right markets. Um, and uh, in, uh, we uh, uh, we need also for project uh, critical sizes. I mean, that uh, mm. would be uh, a fair point. But uh, innovation is definitely one of our, our strengths, and we have a, a long list of uh, history of uh, you know, a new no. product. Which um, I want to put to bring to light because many people think that you are the classic producer, but you are so much more than that. So uh, I think people should really Google and find out what you guys are really about. Much more than, than most people think, I in my eyes. Okay. Well, uh, um, yeah, we 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 have a, a uh, excellent track record in in yeah. innovation, but we do take the time to to come with uh, you know the the optimum solutions and, and we need the critical size for, for, for our project. Mm -hmm. uh, coming back to, you know, what's happening in the US, well, the US is, is the biggest uh, public hygiene uh, market in, uh, you know, in the world. Um, and uh, as, in, as in Europe, they, they've, uh, they, they've seen that the, the potential of uh, uh, remote system uh, uh, tools uh, and uh, um, also, basically, we when we come with a solution, we want to be uh, an excellent solution. We just, you know, we don't just want a solution. You know, we, that's, uh, uh, when we put the stamp of buyer, we want uh, quality uh, behind it, and that's uh, uh, that's why we uh, we we aim for. So, but uh, uh, when we go in a different markets, which um, uh, we are new in, and our customers are new in. There's a lot of uh, new process of mm. adapting and finding the right way, the benefits of, uh, and the constraints of these new solutions. Uh, and that's, that, that's what we are le uh, learning as well. You know, sometimes um, the, um, the customers of our customers are more interested in our solution. Than Agreed, our yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm, I'm sure you have uh, experience uh, as well. Uh, in, in that. So we we are learning, and it it um, it, it takes time. And uh, when when you like that, um, you know there are uh, uh, there are lessons to be learned, and we have to adapt and sometimes modify the, our initial thoughts. Uh, uh, but I, I, I think uh, that's one of the key at the moment. Uh, uh, we also need to think about the end, um, uh, the end customer. So customers of our PCOs, I'm thinking that for maybe uh, rodent monitoring systems, uh, possibly also with bed bug uh, detectors. I mean, just just thought, you know, uh, you have people who are, who are uh, if you put in their hands non-biocide um, uh, non products, uh, where training would, would not need to be uh, uh, handled by professionals. Yeah. You know, they, they would be part of this memorandum of understanding approach where all the key actors need to contribute. You know, bad bugs is very challenging at the moment. Mm, it is. Uh, uh, you know, you have people in, I don't know, in maybe a hotel or whatever, they, they are there all the time. So uh, they will not put in place... Uh, the the control program mm. however you know uh with the uh, level one uh, i would say of training you know and an appropriate tool they they could um, be the alert mm. in some situations i mean you know um, and that's something as well which might have an influence in uh, in in the future uh, but uh, this this covid is really uh, at the end for me uh, an accelerator of uh, uh, changes where which have been initiated uh, already, but uh, it, yeah, it's mm. an accelerator. It's different the way I see it. Uh, I couldn't agree more, Patrick. Uh, Patrick, one more thing I, I would like your opinion on is, um, as you know, many bars, restaurants, hotel chains have huge yeah. um, uh, uh, issues in the moment, <coughs> financial crisis that has also been accelerated by COVID. Do you think these customers that also have pest control uh, contracts, um, does this crisis affect the pest control industry? Are there only, you know, on, on the operator side, do a lot of operators lose business? Uh, on the manufacturer side, do the manufacturers sell less? What would be your perception? Is 2020 going to be a horrible year for pest control or do you think it's going to be, it's going to be okay somehow? 
-hmm. Well, um, for uh, it, it is for sure that uh, a number of businesses uh, in many countries in Europe uh, have been shut down for yeah. a number of weeks, if, if months. Mm -hmm. uh, during that period, most of them have not taken uh, a precaution in terms of uh, pest control. Mm -hmm. And we, we have seen that uh, some of them were starting to reopen, uh, had some uh, surprises as well, and visitors <laughs> which were, uh, yeah, I you were present. So I, 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 I think for the, for the pest controllers who were uh, operating in those uh, situations, yeah, tourisms, uh, hotels, bar, restaurants, yeah. uh, they, they have been affected. Yeah. You know, they have been affected. And, uh, you know, that part of the business will not be recovered. Uh, that's that's just uh, a fact, you know. I mean, uh, on the other hand, there are many other parts of the business uh, where public uh, hygiene is still essential, has been essential, was essential, has continued to be essential throughout the period, uh, and, and it's uh, where you know um, our, our business and our role in society is. Is, uh, is crucial uh, and we, we've seen it again you know not only hospitals but you know food productions uh, the whole food yeah. so you know uh, in that respect some PCOs have been uh, more affected than others some businesses more than others but um, yeah that's uh, yeah. Uh, it, has a, it has had an, uh, some impact it did, yeah. I think in the in the end, also uh, it was funny to learn also that you since you said since middle of March you work from home, so many lives changed, many people had to adapt to new circumstances, and I think also our industry um, had to show that it is resilient to change and to crisis that you know appear out of nowhere basically. And uh, I think when I looked at the broad mass of pest operators in in Europe, also I see many did disinfection. Many have proven to be resilient. Many have shown that they are strong enough to survive the crisis. Now go yeah. back in with full force, as you said, because so many bars, restaurants reopen, and ooh, we have issues with rats and mice and whatever. So, yeah, yeah I, I totally yeah. agree with you, and it's a really interesting year for pest control. Yeah, 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 yeah. Super. No, it's very exciting time. Very exciting times. Uh, yeah. I think we, uh, our industry, is making great progress. Yes. It's showing the the world and society where we are mm. uh, essential, we are important. Uh, and uh, yeah, again, we, uh, uh, one of the message, we need to continue to have the, the right uh, tools, you know, for, to do our jobs uh, efficiently. And, but we also need to raise the bar to be more professional mm. with the right level of training throughout Europe, you know, and that's, uh, that's you know, that it's, it's for us as well to, to get our acts uh, together. No. Accredited. So I think everybody that watches the video, please sign the MOU, right? <laughs> it's linked yes, up. please. <laughs> Patrick, um, thank you so much to be uh, in the show from France. Uh, good to hear that you and your family are well. Thank you for the time and the interview. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you.